Good morning, everyone. It is time for Group B Estimates. I'm actually uh, recording this video on the Saturday morning, no, November the 2nd, but it's going to launch on November the 3rd uh, just because I can't, I'm not going to be able to do it in the morning tomorrow. So here we go. It doesn't matter. Anyway, let's get to it. So real quick, we're on the Yield Max website. Um, so if you're wondering, you know, how do you even know who's on the next distribution? You just go to the bottom of the page, uh, which is annoying, I know. Um, <clears throat> uh, but they have a, a comment or a note, distribution schedules. So if you click on that, you can see, you know, when the groups declare, uh, they could probably organize this better. Um, I know, um, <clears throat> what's it called? Uh, bad financial advice. Uh, she made actually some really good suggestions on what they should do for the website, which I actually forward her video to Jay. So hopefully, you know, something good comes out of it. So uh, shout out to uh, bad financial decisions. So what do we got here? We got group B, when's their next declaration? So their next declaration, if you look on the top, is November 6th. Um, their ex-dividend date is November the 7th, and their payment date is November the 8th, okay? So that's coming up this week. So that's obviously where you can find it, and then you can see the YMAX and YMAG. They also declare, well, they declare every week, uh, but their declaration for the next week will be from the prior group payments, which was group A from the prior week, because again, they got paid from group A last week. They'll take that payment, and then they'll pay it to you this upcoming week. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So now let's get to the video. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Estimate time. So again, guys, these are just guesstimates. Let's not go crazy. Don't make any decision based on what I say, all right, or any other YouTuber. Everyone's just having fun, you know, making their best guess, and it is fun. I have fun. It's a lot of work, but yes, it's fun too. All right, <clears throat> so. Number one is NVIDIA. So what did I do? So first off, you guys know I track NVIDIA, so I have to pull up my spreadsheet, of course. And here it is, right? So if we go to the payment tab, um, oh, I'm in the old file. Oh, by the way, I did pull up the old file just to kind of see. I didn't track it since the beginning of the fiscal year, but overall, I'm not showing that for the fiscal year, they did not have any forcible... Uh, any additional like credits to pay out. So essentially they have more than paid out what they had to. So that's what I saw at least from what, since I started tracking. So now if I go to here, <clears throat> I have to keep in mind <clears throat> the fiscal year ended 1031. All right, so most of this income, in fact, all of it, I think, is for the fiscal year, you know, that they have to pay out 90% of. But you know, again, I have to keep in mind that also that there could be losses, more losses um, <clears throat> that they could offset this against. But regardless, this is the how much they made for this four week, uh, you know, period. They made 91 million in synthetic income. They made 19 million in weekly income. That's a total income of 110 million. And of course, yes, I know they declare Wednesday. So there's a couple trading days in between. I'm, I just make this video on the weekend because it's just easier for me to do it then. I don't have time during the week to do these extra videos. But regardless of that, it shows an income per share of 222. So that would be the highest level, right? The highest estimate. And then I look at the uh, the low side, I would say use the IV. The low side would be $1.26. So keep, I'm keeping those two things in mind. However, I'm just going to assume that they may have to pay out 90%. Or maybe not, right? So I'm gonna take the 222. If I go back to the sheet, and if you look here, I have a little formula. 222 times 90 percent. Actually, 222 times 90 percent, by the way, is two dollars flat. I was gonna leave that there, and I was like, eh, you know what? I don't think, I don't think they have to pay out 90 percent. So I'm gonna lower it just a little bit. I'm gonna say it's a dollar eighty-five. Okay, so my estimate for Nvidia will be a dollar eighty-five, which is a ninety-five percent yield. That's pretty damn good. That should be one of the highlights or the highlight of Group B. 
But let me know if you guys think they're going to pay the two dollars. I mean, I know it's a it sticks out, so they may just do it for for looks. But either way, I'm happy. I'm happy either way. Dollar eighty five, two dollars, um, fantastic. In fact, I originally had a dollar seventy five, and then I had, you know realized the whole fiscal year thing. So I'm like, all right, let's it's just you know it's either two dollars or dollar eighty five, right? It's got to be there. I don't know. Let's move on. All right. Oh, by the way, uh, price change wise for the month, let's see. They did only they they went up about eighty eight cents. But again, since we do the tracking of the actual premium income, I don't really need to look at that. But for you know, funds like Phoebe, I have to. So Phoebe for the month, they actually went down eighteen cents. So what I do is when it goes down money, when they did not make money, like from X date to current date, is I pretty much go by the IV. And look at the historical payments. Last month, Phoebe paid 92 cents. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that they're going to pay a 45% yield. Their IV is 32%. So 45% is, you know, that's generous. However, 68 cents is a big drop off from last month's payments. So keep that in mind too. So my estimate for Phoebe is 68 cents, which is a 45% yield. I'm trying to get all that in the same picture. All right. So next up is JPMO. They paid 37 cents last month. I'm gonna give them a little boost to 43 cents. That would be a 30% guesstimate yield. For the month, they went up 70 cents in price. So that's kind of why, you know, the deciding factor of to raise it a little bit. <clears throat> now, Mernie is probably the worst fund that they have because the underlying sucks, but they paid 37 cents last month, and I'm gonna lower that to 34 cents. To be honest, I didn't even want to give them that much, but you know, that's a 60% yield. Their IV is much higher though. Their IV is 90%. But there's no way they should be paying out 90%. Why? Look at the price. $7.29. How they do for the month? They lost another 37 cents. This fund is going nowhere fast. It is not a good fund. Not at all. So needless to say, I think they're going to decrease their distribution by three cents and pay 34 cents this upcoming week. Again, 60% yield. GDXY, they paid 60 cents, actually the last two uh, periods, um, two declarations. I think they're gonna lower that though to 52 cents. And if you look how much they went up for the month, GDXY went down 25 cents. Their IV is 35%. Again, you look at column AW, their IV is 35%. So I gave them a yield a guesstimate yield in pink of a little above that at 39%, all right? So again, I think they're gonna drop their price a little bit to 52 cents. Next up, Babo. Babo had a noise payment last month, but they did really, really good. Um, so they're gonna pay, uh, they paid last, I'm sorry, last month they paid $1.29. And this month, I think they're gonna pay 85 cents, all right? So let's look and see how they perform this month. They lost $1.85 in price. Okay, that's not that great. Their IV is 44%. That's not even that high. But I did give them a yield above that. I gave them a 52% yield, which is, again, a, a guesstimate of uh, 85 cents. So we'll see. We'll see if that's right. Who the heck knows, right? All right, next up is uh, Platy. All right, Platy obviously is the Palantir Fund. This is the first time they're paying. And no, they don't really have an extra week. They're just paying, I think, it's actually around four weeks, so it's not, not gonna be like boosted up because of that, but I do think they're gonna pay 290. Why 290? Well, guess guess why? Because it's a $50 fund. Again, they launched at a $50. For the month though, they went down 233. That's not good, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. First time paying, I'll give them a boost above their IV slightly. Uh, their IV is 73%, which is really good. Uh, but the guesstimate yield is 76%. So 290 uh, is my guess, which is a 76% yield, okay? Uh, last but not least is dips. Dips is, you know, they're all over the place. In September, they paid $1.21. Last month, they paid 68 cents. I'm gonna think that they're gonna be in line with that. So I'm gonna give them a 71 cent payment, which comes to a 61% yield. 61% uh, yield is very close to their IV of 59%. So you have to look at it that way. And then if you look at the gains per share, they actually went down 40 cents. So nothing, you know, too fantastic about that fund. And if you're wondering 
how much have these funds recovered since the last payment? I do have that information for you as well. All right, so if we go over here, we can see the recovery rate uh, from the last payment. NVIDIA has recovered 80%. Phoebe has recovered negative 19%, not good. Um, JPMO, they recovered all of it and more, 185%. Mernie, negative 98%, but what, you know, it's kind of expected at this point. G GDXY didn't do that good, negative 41%. Babo, negative 143%. Man, that came back down. And then dips, negative 58%. Really not an overall group recovery rate. Not that good. Not good at all. Oh, by the way, since I have a guesstimate yield now, I will have a guesstimate for the YMAX and YMAG payment. However, guys, this is not for next week's payment. This is for YMAX and YMAG payment the following week. Next week's payment we'll do in a second, but this is for the week after next week. So my YMAX guesstimate payment based on uh, the average yield, which is 54%. And if you're wondering, is Platy in there? No, it's not. Platy is not in YMAX, all right? It's not going to be in YMAX. If you go to the website, actually, if you go to YMAX and you go to holdings, you can see it's not there in case you don't believe me. You go to the holdings, right? Um, where are we at? They reallocate once a month, I was told by Jay. Um, but if you're wondering, when does Platy get added? Not now. They have to make a payment first, and then they'll be added during the next monthly allocation, okay? So that's why I'm not adding Platy's average in there, because they're not going to be contributing to the YMAX payment. So that being said, the average yield excluding Platy and excluding dips, because they don't put the inverse in there either, the YMAX distribution estimate is 17 cents. Again, this is not for next week, it's for the following week. And YMAG, boom, bam, 29 cents. Why? Well, NVIDIA is why, right? And then of course they have Phoebe, so they have NVIDIA and Phoebe on this payment, but looking, looking like a pretty good payment for YMAG. Now, for next week's YMAX and YMAG, we do have the actual payments again. So if we go here, we have the actual yield battle royale. Let's make sure it's picking up the right column. AU, yep, AU for the actual yield. So the average actual yield is 48%. If we use that, we can calculate YMAX payment to be 17 cents for next week, and YMAG for next week would be 20 cents. So we'll see. I don't know. Uh, typically, these numbers are pretty good. Um, there's no reason they shouldn't be. Um, it's not exact. It's never going to be exact. Um, you know, things change. But that's my estimate for YMAX and YMAG. Now, since uh, Group A just paid, literally, their ex dividend date was 1031, we can, we can take a look at the recovery rate and see how it's going. I mean, you might not want to, honestly, but let's just take a look anyway. Um, let's see. Everything is red except TSMY and Crash. Tesla, negative. OARC, negative. GUI, negative. Zomo, negative. Ybit, negative. S Snoy, negative. All of these, negative recovery rates. Not a good start. But again, it's only been a few days. Uh, unfortunately, Zomo, very negative. So again, very, very tough start. Uh, you know, Although it wasn't you know, too great of a week at the end. But TSMY did recover 8% and Crash did recover 10% for what that's worth. All right, so moving on, we'll go to group C, right? Because obviously we talked about the recovery rate on group B already. Group C has recovered. Um, Nefli has recovered 165%. And Fiat has recovered 103%. However, everything else is in the shitter, unfortunately. Kony, negative 118%. MSFO, negative 88%. AMDY, negative 129%. PP, negative 58%. And ABNY, negative 2.5%. Ulti, negative 2.42%. So yeah, guys, not really that fantastic. And last but not least, we have Group D. Not much better. Uh, AMZ's doing good, though. They had great earnings. So they recovered 149% thanks to their earnings. Um, who else recovered? No one. So we'll go, just go from the top down. Apple negative 175%. We said AMZ did good, so we skipped that. Disso, negative 33%. Squee has recovered 5%. AIYY. Um, where are they at? They're negative 12%. MSTY, positive 12% at least. They came back a little. SMCY, uh, we know that one, man. That is 
that is really horrible. I mean, I feel bad for anyone who bought an SMCY. I almost did. I was super close to it. But I ended up like, I, again, I said I had to research SMCI. And it's not like I would have caught anything. But, it, you know, I probably would have said they're probably a good company. But, you know, here we are, you know, and their auditors left them. And here it's still going down day by day. Hopefully they find new auditors and recovers. But right now it's at 30 bucks from 50 from oh my god and when when was that at 50 10 24 was their last ex dividend date they were at 50 85 and now they're at the 307 so they're negative 388 recovery rate i mean that's horrible horrible they're down 40 percent. that's freaking brutal man all right that's the that's the risk i talked about it in the video the other day guys that is the risk with these funds because not only is the covered call etf it's a covered call ETF on an individual stock. So there's risk in owning individual stocks, as you know, right? So you have that risk, and then you have the risk that it's a covered call fund on top of it. So this should be really a wake-up call, not only to me, but to everyone, right? You have to rethink. Do you really want a lot of your money in an individual covered call ETF? I mean, think about NVIDIA, for example. This could happen to them. This could happen to anyone, right? Will it? Probably not. But again, it's just the thought that any little event can, look at it, made the stock go down 40%. You could lose 40% in how many days? Not even a freaking week, man. Like, good God. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Very, very risky, you know. Not only investing in individual stocks, but investing in covered call ETFs that do it on an individual stock. Okay, moving on. YQQQ, 39% recovery rate, so not that bad at all. All right, so again, YMAX and YMAG are at the bottom, but they're not really part of this um, you know, much. They have their own little thing going with uh, Defiance Roundhill. All right, so outside of that, what else can I... Uh, talk about. Actually, I, I wanted to see SMCY is 52 week high and low. Let's take a look at those numbers. I mean, SMCI. So right now, the underlying is what's the price? Current stock price. Where's the under? Uh, underlying price 2605. The 52 week low of SMCI is 2274. The 52 week high is 122.90. So they are 3.3% from the 52 week low. So guys, is this a discount or is this stay the hell away? At the same time, we're saying, yes, there's risk, there's risk, there's risk, but you have to, at the same time, be greedy when others are fearful, Fearful, right? That's what uh, Warren Buffett says. So is this the time to do that? I don't know, man, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, in my other fund, in my other account, I did buy a double leverage, uh, in there's double leverage uh, SMCI funds. I did buy some shares in that in case uh, it does recover fast. But, um, you know, I do uh, some swing trading here and there. That's a risk, of course. Um, and obviously it kept dropping, so I kept adding. So we'll see how it plays out. Not Nothing too much, nothing too crazy. I didn't buy SMCY or SMCI or whatever in my uh, Retire Now account, though. But, um, you know, these are in retirement accounts. This is like in a Roth. A wife's Ross. So we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, then whatever. All right. So outside of that, we covered the estimates for everything. Um, what about, you know, house money? We talked about house money. Um, you guys know, you know, Tess, Tess Lee is still far from house money. They, they should have by now, but they reverse split. So again, Tesla, in my opinion, does not work well with these funds. It doesn't. I know people will hate me for saying that, but it just doesn't. It has, it has unappreciative IV, which means they can't go, they can't sell calls far enough out of the money, which means they lose out on the, a lot of the upside. And that's unfortunate. So, I mean, OARC, obviously they're not doing that great either, but they recovered 53%. Now, NVIDIA, obviously they paid back already, you know, 100% house money had you invested in this fund in the beginning. Phoebe's getting there, 53%. Coney, 110%. So they paid it back. AMDY 58%, Squee 58%, and Misty probably do it in the next one or two payments. So those are ones that stick out, okay? Outside of that, you know, there's nothing really else to cover. Um, obviously, you know, there's no new funds. There's no nothing. 
there's just uh the estimates so i'll do i think i'll end it there actually but i'll do a recap on what my estimates were in case you guys uh just joined the uh premiere where the hell is it all right um for those of you that don't know i do premiere my videos which means you can watch it live with other people the video is not live but the premiere is all right here's my estimates real quick nvidia 185 phoebe 68 cents jpmo 43 cents Mernie, 34 cents gdxy 52 cents babo 85 cents platy plty 290 dips 71 cents and if you're wondering what the yields are i'll do that real quick too NVIDIA will pay a 95% guesstimate yield, Phoebe 45% yield, JPMO 30% yield, Murney 60% yield, GDXY 39% yield, Babo 52% yield, Platy 76% yield, and Dips a 61% yield. Now, as far as next week's YMAX and YMAG payments, we are looking at approximately 17 cent payment from YMAX and a 20 cent payment for YMAG. And then for the following week, we are looking at a guesstimate payment for YMAX of 17 cents and then YMAG 29 cents. Okay, so that is the update on everything, right? Everything outside of that. I mean, again, what funds are going to launch next? Maybe Marrow, maybe Sivni, maybe Roki, maybe Hui right? Robley, Shoy, Dre, who knows? Who knows who's going to launch next? Who do you guys want to launch next from this, from this list, right? Um, who knows? I, I mean, I think they should get the Robin Hood one, Robin Hood one out, right? Why the hell not? So we'll see. Why is current stock price not working? Hmm. A46? Marrow, yeah, price. Obviously, it's not working. Whatever. It's all good. Uh, sometimes Google Sheets does that, but yeah, we'll see what uh what fun comes out next. Um, and then, you know, see if it helps YMAX or hurts YMAX. I think they should personally, you know, they should add some safe funds. They should really start adding some safer funds like Target, like Nike, right? I mean, come on, let's get some safety in this YMAX. You know, it's it's very volatile as it stands. You know, I'm happy they got the Apleys and the Amzies. And the dissos even, but um, because they're more stable, but they need to get a little more stability. I know it'll lower the yield, but it'll keep it a little more stable. You have to keep that in mind, guys. All right. All right. As always, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully at fun, hopefully you're entertained. If not, we will try again on the next week. But again, this guesstimate is just for fun, for real, guys. But let me know what you think. Do you think any of these, are you thinking the same numbers as me? Or are you thinking something different? What, like, what do you think NVIDIA is going to pay? Let me know in the comments down below, all right? Now, um, if you enjoy this content, please hit the like button, okay? Please hit the like button. Um, and if you want to help out the community further or the channel further, you can share this video with whoever, friends, family, other groups that you're in, so on and so forth. Now, if you made it this far in the video and you want to prove it, it's keyword time, all right? I'm recording this video on the Saturday. I feel like I'm cheating, right? Uh, obviously, I'm posting it on the Sunday, so is, should I make a keyword for that? Who the hell knows, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know. So maybe, you know what? We'll do the keyword is, um, the keyword is how much do you think NVIDIA is going to pay because NVIDIA, you know, a lot of people consider them the GOAT. I do, you know, they're the GOAT. They really are. Uh, Misty's pretty much the GOAT too. There's two GOATs, I, but NVIDIA, it's just safer. It's just a safer bet and it's just doing so well from inception. So anyway, that being said, for Group B, NVIDIA's really it. And really, NVIDIA's going to steal the show. So what do you think NVIDIA's going to pay? So if you made it this far in the video and you want to prove it, what you have to do is give me your NVIDIA guesstimate. Am I on target? Or do you think it's going to be more? Do you think it's going to be less? Right? If you don't want to make a guesstimate, you could always just say freaking NVIDIA, right? Because some people don't want to make an estimate. All right, guys, I think that's enough for today. This is actually my fourth video of the day. I had to get these out because I'm not going to have time later. But um, yeah, hopefully I didn't screw anything up. But I'm out of here. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Later.